Hey, Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here, and today I'm going to be visualizing Tesla's Q1 earnings and taking a close look at a few metrics that I haven't seen many other people cover. So let's get started, but before we begin, thank you to all the Patreons that make these episodes possible, and as always, all content is my opinion only and not financial advice. So let's get started by recapping Q1 deliveries, where Tesla delivered a record 422,000 vehicles while they produced just over 440,000. Both records, by the way. And as I'm sure you've heard, Tesla have had substantial price cuts in Q1, with vehicle average selling prices down from 51,500 in Q4 down to 46,850 in Q1 of this year, which is a drop of about 9%. So to put the two together, Sales up 4.3% from Q4, but average selling prices down 9%. And due to the average selling prices falling more than the growth rate in deliveries, we can see that Tesla's revenue was just short of Q4 from last year. But then again, keep in mind, 4 out of the last 5 years we have seen Tesla's revenue decline from Q4 to Q1. But overall, the trend has still been up. And it's no secret. Elon wants to prioritize growing the fleet over growing margins, and that bodes well for accelerating FSD development. Remember, more data equals faster improvement. Faster improvement speeds up how fast FSD will be solved. And the sooner FSD can be solved, the sooner Tesla can realize higher margins. But there's a lot of uncertainty as to when this will happen, which means many on Wall Street will only believe it once they see it happen. Moving on to Tesla Energy, which is really starting to pick up the pace of growth now that the Lathrop facility has ramped production. And as I'm sure you've heard, Tesla is going to build another Megapack factory in Shanghai, which would help continue the growth in energy. Next up, here is Tesla service revenue, which has been benefiting from the rollout of Tesla insurance. Also, a larger fleet results in more post-warranty servicing, and an ever-growing supercharger network that is cashing in on non-Tesla EVs. Now, let's have a look at some of Tesla's financial ratios, starting with Tesla's price-to-sales ratio, which has rebounded from a low of 4 up to 7. And what does this tell us? Well, it simply means that Tesla's stock price rose at a faster pace than that of revenue in Q1. And keep in mind, these ratios aren't the be-all and end-all to tell you if Tesla's stock price is either undervalued or overvalued. It's just an interesting data point that's intriguing to track over time. And also gives you another metric which can be compared to other companies. Next, here are Tesla's gross automotive margins, which dropped down to 21.1% or 19% if excluding regulatory credits. And this is where most of the focus has been post earnings. But keep in mind, even though Tesla's margins have dropped in Q1, they are still the best in the EV industry by a wide margin. The question with gross automotive margins is, where to from here? And to answer this question, that deserves its very own video, as there are many factors in play, such as ramping production at Giga Berlin and Texas, and then you've got the Cybertruck which will have an effect, not to mention changing interest rates and macroeconomic factors which impact demand, which impacts pricing. So a lot of moving parts to account for, so stay tuned for a complete deep dive on this very topic in a future episode. Moving on, let's have a look at Tesla's earnings, where Tesla reported a gap profit of 2.5 billion. And like automotive gross margins, there have been a lot of debate as to whether this is a short-term drop or is Tesla's profit growth over? Again, like gross margins, there are a lot of moving parts and variables that need to be considered to answer this question. So stay tuned as I'll be covering this in a future episode. And staying on the topic of earnings, here is Tesla's PE ratio, which has bounced back due to a fall in profit this quarter while the stock price has rebounded from the lows of Q4 last year. Now the final metrics that we're going to look at are the less talked about ones, but I believe they still offer some intriguing insights into Tesla's business. Starting off with long-term debt, 
which just keeps going lower. I mean, great move by Tesla's management to start paying down debt all the way back in Q1 of 2020. And as Tesla's debt has reduced, so have their interest payments, which bodes well for future profitability. Meanwhile, Tesla's cash on hand has increased ever so slightly from the previous quarter to another all-time high of $22.4 billion. And with a growing cash pile and rising interest rates, what does that mean for Tesla's interest income? Well, it came in at $213 million and trending up quite sharply. I mean, annualized, this is now over $800 million and something to keep an eye on in future quarters. So in summary, Tesla continued to grow deliveries, but a price drop has meant revenue, margins and profits have taken a hit in Q1. Cash on hand is at record levels, with long-term debt all but paid off. So that wraps up this summary of Q1 earnings, but stay tuned for more content, including part 3 of year 2022, the Rise of Tesla documentary series, which will be released in the next few days. So, Till then, have a great day and I'll see you soon.